Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of our dungeons. Every single dungeon in World of Warcraft. And I know you're waiting to just find out where Toldegore is on the list. I know that. Let's get into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our overview of every World of Warcraft dungeon that has ever been created. And trying to figure out which ones are the best ones and the worst ones. It's been eye-opening for me. Uh, to remember some of these and the ones I forgot as well. It's nice to see that several of you in the comments section did forget <laughs> your original versions. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's get cracking on here. Uh, next up, we did the Arcway last, but the next one that just slightly pipped that out was Mogashun Palace. Mogashun Palace, again, great theme. Uh, bosses were actually super creative. Enjoyed the bosses in here quite a good amount. However... They're very slow, which drags it down. It was very slow. Elevator rides, obviously waiting for the bosses to transition. Anybody who's farming this uh, will know exactly how long it takes for like, the stairs to go down. And when you're in a hurry, when you're farming it, having these kind of forced delays, I don't think helps a dungeon out at all. And it's a real shame because the palace itself, especially the last boss and the gimmicks that go on there with deactivating the traps and things, 10 out of 10. Uh, next up, I have Necrotic Wake. Necrotic Wake is a fine dungeon, and I think people hate it because of the uh, obvious pug problems that you have in Necrotic Wake, which is a real shame, because the bosses are actually very, very cool. Besides the first one, the first one's kind of mundane and can go wrong very is easily. It's, a, it's kind of resetting the game and teaching people that you should kill ads, yet the amount of times that people don't kill ads still and just go, lol, lol, lol kill boss. Is very highlighted there. But the second boss is very cool. Spawning the adds. Having the dragon breath that spins you around. Uh, having that happen. The trash in there is pretty creative as well. Good managing of interrupts going on there. As well as the surgeon boss is fantastic. Like I love the surgeon boss. It's a shame that it's it can cause so many problems so quickly. And the same with the last boss. One bad frost nova and you're in a whole heap of crap. Yet the idea of being thrown off and to do your own private mini gauntlet. And come back and then position the ice pools. I like the necrotic weight very much. I'm actually going to throw in here as well the other side. The other side's redeeming feature is that each part of that dungeon is really cool. It's such a crying shame that it's such a pain in the ass to navigate and they didn't do something about it. It was my immediate feedback with the other side is this dungeon is really cool. You've got all different environments that are very thematic. We've got uh, great bosses from the past mixed in with some really new twists. Yet, navigating it is not hard, it's just annoying. Running backwards and forwards, getting on your mount, moving around, especially when Spiteful, not, um, when Prideful was in the game, uh, which is about to leave us as, uh, as of recording this. Going further to kill more trash, then come back. It felt like a lack of planning, or whether Blizzard thought they were being clever with trying to figure out whether people would work it out, which they obviously would, and then there's no payoff. The result is more backtracking, uh, which is a real shame on the other side. Um, bit of a pity there. Bit of a pity in how that paid off. Uh, but moving forward then. The Throne of Tides. The Throne of Tides is awesome. And I will fight anybody who says it's not. It's really cool. There's so much great ideas in Throne of Tides. And the crying shame about Throne of Tides is one of its best bosses is skipped. Every single time. Which is the mind control slug going on your brain and having to deal with it. But the last Ozomat fight is also awesome. I cannot forget the first moment that thing slammed into the glass. And how excited I was by that. And still am today. When the players go huge and start blasting it and do all those things. I love the Throne of Tides. I think this is a great dungeon. Uh, next up is one that is misremembered as being awesome when it was good. It wasn't awesome. And that's the Shattered Halls. The Shattered Halls has such a sordid history throughout World of Warcraft. Uh, because it's remembered for being the toughest of the attunement dungeons to complete. In order to get your attunement process done in the Burning Crusade. And it won't be like that in TBC Classic, which is about to come out, because people know far too much about the game and how to min-max themselves. But we didn't know that then. The Shattered Halls is thematically great, and the bosses are cool as well. I love the, the, the fact that it's a training garrison. I love that you bypass certain areas by going through the sewers. I liked that the bosses were constantly drafting in more personnel in order to help them. I liked the Blade Fist boss. Does he, uh, mainly after it was fixed it, it used to just one shot people which was very frustrating but the actual idea of fighting there while also having people keep the keep the reinforcements at bay and having on top of that the actual timed run which gave you many more rewards once you got better at it really good unfortunately it was just too brutal and too much trash and it's not it is a garrison it is you know the barracks and all that kind of things but 
it's it was endless and you and they're all the same that's the trash variety is practically non-existent in there outside of the sewers themselves and you just ended up doing it over and over and over and over again it did not help that a lot of the stuff in there one shot you when you first got in there either because that just got frustrating uh, next up is a, is a dungeon that I think thematically nailed it and had some good creative bosses. We're really getting into the good dungeons now, and this would be the Halls of Lightning. Halls of Lightning, I think if you've been doing time walking, comes across as tedious and annoying, but the, the the actual current version of it, when it was, you know, when it was the live version, I think was really cool. The Thorin fight is, um, is it Thorin? Whoever it is at the end was really cool fighting the lightning moving back in and out which you had to do originally i loved the giant boss walking around and seeing him getting buffed and getting huge and then you have the problem with someone ninja pulls like oh my god can we deal with this trash as it's moving around i am um, it was a shame that the the weakest part of this dungeon is the middle bit waiting for the statues to pop uh and the tedious lightning boss that's the real shame of this dungeon that drags it down the list is those bosses eventually if you knew what to do and you knew that you could just move to the other side and just kind of afk that's when it got a little tedious. But everything else about it, from giant colossal monsters everything, uh, down to the tiny, tiny dwarves that would cause so many problems. I think they're called Rune Shapers. I haven't done this dungeon in forever, but I still remember Rune Shapers giving me nightmares. Uh, similar in Wrath of Lich King, though, Gundrak. Gundrak is really, really cool. And it's one of those dungeons, again, it's a crying shame that it's it's now done utilizing every skip imaginable. Um gundrak is a really awesome dungeon i like the idea that we're doing something more indiana jonesy it's a more of a fantasy adventure dungeon we've got to turn those things around the bosses are all very very creative little easy but that's that's kind of a weakness of some of these dungeons is the bosses get a little easy i like that we had hidden bosses on heroic and the last boss was really cool uh dealing with storming rhinos and things like that De and snake bosses giant elementals that turns things it had everything Really is a crying shame that most people just dive in the water and skip most of this dungeon because the actual dungeon itself is very cool. Next one up is probably one of the prettiest dungeons on this list and it's the Mechanar. The Mechanar is, was, was very hard. Uh, the Mechanar is one of the toughest dungeons, uh, especially the last boss is really, really tough when we were doing it originally. So that might bias my view here because I got very engaged with Mechanar runs and put groups together for it and stuff like that. But the first boss with the giant mech throwing bombs everywhere, having to utilize that entire space, uh, moving up and moving around the, the top of the mech. It felt like a factory, uh, which is what it was supposed to be like. It felt like a futuristic, sciencey factory. And I adore the mech very, very much. The same as I adore, and I imagine many people hate this, hate this one, but I like it, is the Halls of Valor. The Halls of Valor, I'm putting up here in the more topper echelons. Halls of Valor is not only absolutely frigging gorgeous, uh, and there was never a time I went up the bridge towards the end of Halls of Valor where I wasn't like happy and people using inky black potions in there, even to this day, just to see what it looks like. Um, the bosses were cool. I liked the Fenrir boss. I liked the I forget the name of the the actual boss itself, but the um, the boss that would charge through and drop things. And then the last boss uh, was also really cool, utilizing the runes and utilizing the shield in order to uh, prevent the deaths there. Having the spectators around the Colosseum, it really felt like a Halls of Valor. It felt like exactly what I would expect from there. Uh, next up is going to be back, all the way back in the Burning Crusade, actually, that I rated slightly above Halls of Valor, purely probably because of uh, nostalgic memory, but I love this dungeon. It's the Blood Furnace. The Blood Furnace really fit the theme of Gul'dan's magic and uh, all the twisted things that were happening with the Red Orc. Sorry if I got the lore wrong. And then looking down, I think the best part about this is that you look down onto the final boss. It's not a particularly difficult boss. Um, and see what you're going to face. And you're thinking about that as you move through the dungeon. That's something I think is so off often missed. It can't be overdone, but it is missed more often than not. Is you see this thing, you're like, it's a massive creature. You're like, oh, Jesus. And you're looking down over Magtheridon. Uh, and you, then you move around and you're dealing with something else. It's uh, The Blood Furnace is one of those incredible experiences I went with. Incredibly hard, though. <laughs> incredibly hard. The same uh, can't be said, actually, for our next one, which I think was a slightly better dungeon, but was not as hard, but equally cool, which was the Steam Vaults. The Steam Vaults um, in the Burning Crusade. In fact, the next couple are going to be Burning Crusade dungeons. Uh, the Steam Vaults is one I remember fondly as being like easy and relaxing I th uh, for the achievement process. I think you could even swim down and skip most of the dungeon. Um... But the Steam Vaults itself, the actual bosses, really cool. I love the last boss here, and I love moving through the dungeon to get there. Uh, as Being aptly named as the Steam Vaults, it felt like the Steam Vaults. It, trans it transitioned through all those areas super well. Again, that factory feel 
uh, that was going on in there. It's almost industrial yet underwater feel. And I remember feeling very cool in there all the time and enjoying every boss there. Uh, Hellfire Ramparts is next up. And that is one I did recently. And I still remember it very fondly. What an idyllic first dungeon for Blizzard's first World of Warcraft expansion, which would have likely brought with it a ton of new players. Really short, yet very creative. Um, they moved you through several different areas while presenting what you needed to do very, very clearly, but also made it pretty tough. Uh, as we found out doing it in blue gear, that dungeon is not easy when you're doing it like slightly underleveled and in blue gear. At least on the stuff Blizzard gave us. But Hellfire Ramparts, it has everything you would want from what you'd expect to find in a World of Warcraft dungeon. A giant casting monster... Um, you have big orcs working together. And then the finale, a guy riding a dragon, which is everything you want to see. And I think as an opener to the Burning Crusade, it was much more efficient than we'd seen in a lot of the classic dungeons, which were not as good. Uh, and I think this nailed it particularly well. Next up is what I know people hate, <laughs> but I don't mind it. I know, pe I, I understand why people hate this dungeon, but I, I can't help what I like, man. Uh, Told to go. I always enjoy Told to go. And it's it's one of those that every time I mention it, it's like, I don't mind Soldigo. People go, what? <laughs> like, are you joking? I'm like, no, I don't mind it. I liked that it had all the hidden buffs in there. I liked that you could bring keys to bypass through a prison. I liked the cannon mechanic at the end. Uh, I don't like the last boss. I think the last boss could have been done much better. Being forced to push yourself into a wall is never fun. The camera was definitely wonky in there, like it is in some of my worst dungeons on this list. But the actual theme of assaulting a prison, I think they did really well. Uh, and I like it. Yes, I've pulled mobs through walls and just had endless amounts of extra trash come through me. I've done all that. But then again, never forget when a spectral cannon started riding across the floor in order to get you. So Taldegor is up next. I, I like that one. Okay, controversial one as well for the people who did it. Um, because I will be the first to say a lot of this dungeon sucks, but it, it, it made it work. And it's the Black Morass. The Black Morass is the final portion of the dungeon achievement process in the Burning Crusade. It was incredibly tough and... Uh, yeah, I mean, despite how high it is on the list, the trash here leading to the actual bosses is pretty garbage. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty garbage, but it's really cool to do. The environment is cool. What you're doing in there is really cool and the bosses are so good. They really are so, so good uh, that I find it hard to dislike it. As much frustration and anger as this dungeon has caused me in the past, especially attuning my guild through there, uh, gnomes getting stuck in the water because they're too short and having a really bad time just riding from place to place for random circles. It's over there, it's over here. I The, the timer element of it, I really enjoyed. I can't help it. The, the, the element of the actual pressure you felt when you started the Black Morass, when you clicked that button and you said go, I really liked it. Weirdly enough, on the prison theme, and you've probably been wondering if I was going to bypass it, because how could it be so high on the list? But it is for me, and it's the Stockades. Alliance only, for the most part, and done so well. Short, quick, and everything I would expect to find in a little inner city prison. Uh, again, it's the theme that carried this dungeon. It's the guards make sense, or the bosses make sense. They're not the most spectacular thing in the world, and the, uh, previous on this list, there are better examples of mechanical bosses. But in terms of a good quality dungeon, I think the Stockades is right up there. It's great. It's efficient. It's fun. Uh, you're not. It's not taking up too much of your time. It's really quick. Like, if I compare... I think I recall the first time I ever did the Stockades was when I transferred to Alliance to join Method. And I had to re-level again. And I had never done the Stockades before that. So it would have been Wrath of the Lich King when I did the Stockades for the first time. And I remember screaming at uh, Zuzanita, one of the rogues at the time. It's like... We get Rage Fire Chasm, you get this. And it is so much better. So, so much better that I, ha I hold it in high regard. It probably is too high on this list, but I don't care. I remember this thing so fondly, and I did it again recently, and I was like, this, this is cool. For a little quick dungeon that's supposed to fit into that sort of Rage Fire Chasm, nice leveling dungeon slot, the Stockades works really well for me. And next time I put all three together, because I think all three as a package works. Individually, I don't think they work too well. And this is Dire Maul. So this is East, West, and North. Uh, I've put them all together. I thought about breaking them down, but they are just, you can do them all in one go, right? You can do that. And some parts are weaker than others. And I always get them mixed up, but the flowery area where you're following the demon is the weaker part of it for me. 
yeah, it pays off really well. Yet it moves through to the entire open area, the libraries, like the actual theme of invading Dire Mall. I, I just think they nailed that. I absolutely think they nailed the entire package. While I'm not a big fan of doing it on the, on, uh, you know, I could pick out, if I look at it as a whole picture, I could pick out pockets of areas I'm not a big fan of. Yet when I look at the whole thing, I'm like, this place is incredible. It's really well done. And the fact is it does all connect together so you can move through it. I mean, sometimes you are moving just through really long corridors, but it works super well as like a big investment. And so many times we just did them all. It's, you know, you go from having the uh, the suit event to work its way towards the end where it's got all that stuff going on with the giant um, ogres all the way down to dealing with the giant demon inside the shield. Like so many elements of this are just so creatively cool that I very much enjoy it. Uh, next one is another one that got spoiled by later gear, but on its first current runs, I think very cool. And that is Utgard Pinnacle. Utgard Pinnacle is a dungeon that if you're doing it in appropriate gear, I think is really cool. And again, time walking might have spoiled this for a lot of people, because especially them farming mounts and things. It's one of those things that's like, people have been transmog farming the mount from here for so long that you kind of, uh, it, it just becomes annoying. Any sort of like, slow down or anything like that really irritates you and this was a boss where you could straight up this was a dungeon where you could straight up skip several bosses and people started doing that certainly in modern era where they're just rushing through uh, which is a real shame because the original when you did it for gear and you actually wanted stuff out of there oh god pinnacle is fantastic um the uh, i forget the name of the guy but uh lodi scody uh firing down the frost as you move through the gauntlet when you couldn't just pull everything and just aoe at the end when you had to move through shooting the spears and having fun with that uh also moving through and turning the all the bosses on so you could activate the giant end boss and act, you can see the statues of these giant bosses you're going to find as well as arthas making an appearance and then dealing with the uh the scabbard especially when damage was low so you really had to focus into getting that done I have great memories of this, which are utterly crushed by time walking and thinking about Wrath of Lich King later. But as a dungeon in itself, done at the right time in the right place, superb. Uh, the next one up is going to be Iron Docks, actually. I'd forgotten all about the Iron Docks. And um, I was like, I can't really remember this. But then when it came back to it, I was like, oh, this dungeon was awesome. This dungeon was really cool. I love the Iron Docks. The Iron Docks was a big, sprawling, open area that looked like a working physical dock which is what i want when i'm invading a dungeon if you're going to segment it away from the world i want it to be a place that deserves that that kind of treatment some of these dungeons don't deserve that kind of treatment there's just not enough there the iron docks absolutely does i the last boss with all the cannons uh moving through it from all the way across and trying to bypass it it had that kind of weird weird segment where you had to move the blocks and things but other than that, this was a great, great open area that I truly adored every single time I did it. I was surprised to slip my memory because as soon as I remembered it, I was like, oh, yes, this is cool. Really cool. Really enjoyed the Iron Docks. Uh, next up, I know, don't hate me, but I like it, is the Theatre of Pain. Theatre of Pain. Um, why do I like the Theatre of Pain? I, there's a Similar to what I said for Trial of the Grand Crusader, there's a time and a place for a really low trash kind of straightforward dungeon. If it's creative enough. And Theatre of Pain is... As annoying as it can be, uh, certainly on Mythic Plus, with a gets, it falls to that similar problem with the other side, where I think Blizzard were trying to be clever, is having going one way, then stopping and coming back and going another way. Uh, the actual stuff in there is cool. The idea of the PvP boss is good on paper. It's terrible in practice. But what I found is that if we were having fun and we were way above the timers and things like that for doing Mythic Plus, people would PvP because it's a good fun little thing to do and it doesn't matter. Uh, so people did take advantage of it, whereas in the beta when I first saw this, I was like, okay, people are just going to sit down and let someone kill us and get back to the boss. That's not what happened in a lot of cases. Uh, people would just have fun PvPing with each other. And if you're in a pug, people always PvP there. <laughs> they always PvP there. Putting the batteries in to fire around the corridors uh, was real. is really fun. It is. Zooming across, picking your route. Are you a right or a lefty? And I'm sure some of you are going to go, you always go right. All right. Sometimes people go right, left. Uh, that kind of stuff I thought was really cool as well. And I also like the hook boss. Uh, it's, it's nice getting hooked and being in what looks like a really grisly butcher's chamber. I think it's really nice. So I have, uh, I have, uh, I have Theater of Pain in there, and I put alongside that the Halls of Atonement. That is going to round out, unfortunately, our um, Shadowlands dungeons. But the Halls of Atonement, nice open area. The, the only letdown is I, I like the theme of the Halls of Atonement. I think it's got some really cool trash. Uh, I like the first boss very much. I think the first boss is pretty awesome. Uh, I also quite like the second boss. The only problem is 
it's the bosses themselves are kind of creatively void there's nothing the first boss does that hasn't really been seen before the same with the second boss uh the third boss might as well not exist and the fourth boss throws statues i mean it, that's it's a letdown but the actual theme of everything else in there i think is cool i, I think the trash is really cool i like the big open area that you've got to weave through just before you get to the second boss i like i even quite enjoyed the cathedral where they're all praying where you you kind of make this cause like can we zerg it can we not uh and if it goes wrong you kind of got to sort it out and deal with it and then people are padding and then the moonkin is uh definitely single targeting he promises uh while he's in there but i quite like the halls of atom i think it's pretty good uh next up with the eye of ashara I still remember to this day looking out over that um over that field and seeing the giant boss at the end as much as it caused fps lag in its first initial version uh, as many people remember i have ashara used to be called the lag of ashara uh, <laughs> kind of a bummer uh, but other than that again creative bosses loved moving through that big open area loved dealing with all the different things i love the worm boss popping up all over the place as frustrated as i got when people would would do it incorrectly uh, they really utilize the space which is often what blizzard doesn't do they create wide open spaces and they just don't use utilize it but they did in nearly every single one of these bosses uh mechanically sound um all the bosses were kind of creative and worked well and moving through there especially when you really started to push uh certainly in the mythic plus era uh starting to push through there you realize the, how clever blizzard had been with a lot of this trash also had the massive aoe segments which i think gives some levity and brevity uh to it you got this point to look forward to where you're going to get to absolutely blast depending on your class uh i have a shower very cool uh, next up, we're going back to Wrath, uh, pit, the Pit of Sauron. Um, as much as Halls of Reflection and the Forge of Souls are down this list, I think they nailed Pit of Sauron. Um, th this is this was cool. I remember going because if you if you never did this originally, I, I, I imagine this isn't in the game anymore. But you couldn't do Pit of Sauron without doing Forge of Souls. They in fact just led to each other back to back, and then finishing Pit of Sauron opened up the Halls of Reflection. I'm sorry, I got a very itchy nose. Um, but Pit of Sauron, you went through the, you were in this like kind not claustrophobic but very linear Forge of Souls right into the Pit of Sauron, and there you saw this massive open area where the slave labor was working and all those things, and you had to weave your way through. And they created multiple paths uh, to get through there, which is always interesting. They had ambushes in there. The Frost Boss was pretty creative, figuring out for the first time how you do it, and having to redo that recently um, for, I think it was a time walking thing we were checking out. Uh, I forgot how it worked, and then remembering, I was like, this is pretty cool. Along with the uh, poison boss, the third boss, and then we had that crazy gauntlet leading all the way to the last boss, which had the damage reflection, which was always fun because your friends were killing your friends. And it's always a great time when your friends are killing your friends because they need that DPS. And I think they nailed the Pit of Sauron. I really did. I think they absolutely crushed it. Uh, next up will be the one that I think has one of the best atmospheres in World of Warcraft, and that would be the Black Rook Hold. Black Rock Hold is cool. It got so annoying at higher Mythic Plus, though. I'm not going to deny that. But the actual premise of Black Rock Hold, uh, moving up through it, was always fun. Always fun. I enjoyed this immensely. This is one of my most fun dungeons to tank. Had a great time in here. Moving through those twisted corridors, of course, you know, there was there was definite problems there later on in Mythic Plus. But Black Rock Hold is a thematic situation. Very, very awesome. Uh... I have nothing but good words to say about Black Rock Hold. I very much enjoy it. All right, we're moving into some BFA dungeons now. Overall, after I did this, BFA got a lot of its dungeons pretty right. There are some stinkers in there for me, like, you know, like the Snack Temple and stuff. But next up was King's Rest. I know a lot of you dislike King's Rest, but I think, again, that's because of how higher scaling Mythic Plus scaled it. Um, if we look towards med medium levels and things like that, and when it's first launched in its Mythic Zero state, King's Rest was so much better than siege of Baralis. <laughs> let's put it that way uh we had really cool interesting trash we had the little um ceremony going on to activate the first boss then we had that mini boss gauntlet which was really cool moving into the coffins where you're banging on the coffin and you're shaking it then moving through to one of the most creative yet really difficult bosses at higher keys which would have been the three different bosses that were in random orders and then the raptor boss at the end which i think even though it's really good was the weakest of them which is a real sh which is a good message uh, a really good message for this this dungeon is that the last boss with riding around on, on raptors and things was actually considered to be the weakest of the bosses. Uh, really interesting from start to finish. I adored this, but not as much as I liked Ataldazar. Ataldazar, the city of the city of the sun. Uh, you can see it from um, I forget the name now where we were in BFA, but you know where I mean. <laughs> you can see it from the entrance to the big temple, um, Dazzarlaw, and you can 
you can just see this temple in the distance and you're thinking, this is what I want in a fantasy game, is I can see this mystical place, the city of gold off in the distance, and then you fly over there and it is a dungeon, if not two dungeons. And the boss is in there, also really cool, if not a little easier on the lower keys, but uh, I'm sure many people think of this boss, as, this dungeon as being frustrating because of the trash pack before the giant troll boss or the fact that people wouldn't kill the totems on time yeah that little bit of coordination that little bit of flair that's what gives these dungeons the character opening the gates moving through fighting a giant dinosaur in a pit yes it's Razan, but still fighting a giant dinosaur in a pit and then a huge spider lady at the end everything i would want for my indiana jones fantasy adventure and i lean definitely more that way than lord of the Rings style fantasies to that kind of adventure um and but finally my favorite and maybe i just have a thing for pirates <laughs> but freehold freehold is great Freehold is really cool. We're assaulting a pirate town, and it feels like that. They have everything in there that you would expect from a pirate town. They have the drinking. They have the little mini game with the dogs and uh, trying to get yourselves drunk. We get rid of one of the captains because they're in a party. Then they've got the arena, which you would absolutely expect to exist in a pirate town. With, I mean, they've got a guy wearing sharks for fists. It's a really cool dungeon. And then the last boss stood over that pile of gold. Tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Love the freehold. Uh, this one, actually, I had to go back and rewatch because I forgot some of the details of it. But when I found them, I, I remembered how much I enjoyed it. It's the Skyreach. For those of you who forget the Skyreach, the Skyreach is another birdie one. But what fun this was. These great platforms. I remember trying out so many different things. You do some crazy AoE in here, and it felt like we were assaulting a bird city, uh, which is exactly what I would love to do. I think when Blizzard has a creative theme to play with, they just run with it and they do a really good time and skyreach is one of those moving through skyreach i just remember how much fun i had and how interesting the bosses were along the way and not only just the theme and everything just setting it alight absolutely tremendous uh next one i really struggled with where to put this uh because i have fond memories but again with classic world of warcraft out i think people are going to consider it to be uh not as good as i remember but i'm going to use my memory because it's my list uh so i'm going to start with lower black rock spire LBRS is definitely by modern standards considered a little behind the times, but it wasn't then. And I know some people are like, oh, you had to be there to be there. I don't care if you think that. I really don't because LBRS is a great dungeon. It's still great today. It really is. So many optional bosses and different ways of going inside LBRS, uh, dealing with uh, really interesting bosses, extra bosses that you can summon uh, and deal with that are really hard and if you fail them it's a one-time thing that's cool i'm all right with that moving through the lower city as you try to find certain recipes and deal with the spiders that are in the foundations and uh, the lofty environments moving up to the big final boss lbrs is a really enjoyable experience um and rerunning it during classic i had a great time in lbrs it was one of the most funs i have but not quite as much fun as i had in ubrs ubrs was my first ever raid yet technically it is a dungeon so I had it on my raid list as well. Uh, but in terms of dungeons, UBRS, I rate really highly. It had everything I would want from a dungeon, a big scale dungeon. Whether it be it the beast, or be it jumping down into the pit with Blackhand, uh, dealing... I think the weakest part of UBRS, and still do, is, Gen is General Dracosath at the end. Um, that's not the right name, is it? I can't remember. But the general at the end, uh, kiting it out. That was, the, that was the miserable time. But moving through it was terrifying. I actually felt super intimidated by UBRS. Um... I was more than happy to relive that experience. It's for, certainly for a dungeon that was created in Classic. It's got drama. Uh, it's got actual like immersion going on there, which is super cool. The Temple of the Jade Serpent. Over to Mr. Pandaria now for the next few, actually. Uh, Temple of the Jade Serpent is one of those dungeons that I remember just being like, wow, this is cool. So many creative ideas here with the two bosses that were swapping backwards and forwards. We had the guy who was popping out of the water and sending elementals at us. Not overly difficult. A dungeon that I think by the time people were doing challenge modes was finished in like three minutes or something ridiculous. Uh, but we had the giant green dragon for those of us who were doing it originally. Uh, leaving to the big shah at the end which had a variety of mechanics going on with it. I think thematically and uh, mechanically this dungeon really was up there. Not stupendous. It's not in like an A tier or anything like that but it's pretty good. Same with a Storm Stout Brewery. Attacking a brewery, ailmentals, right? Whacking things with hammers. It's really fun. This is just a fun dungeon. And I can't take it away from that. Like, they got really silly with it. And I am fine with it. I am so okay with that. Uh, the Storm Stout Brewery was... I think the weakest part is the last boss. Even though you do get to fly around and jump up and down. And that's saying something. Because that boss is still fun to this day. 
So Stormstart Brewery, I think, deserves its place up there. The same as the Siege of Nizal Temple. Siege of Nizal Temple had so much going for it that uh, I I always had fun here. It didn't always work, which is, I, but again, creative choice, I think, works really, really well. So we had the, you start off inside the sort of amber of it, and you deal with a boss that gives you a massive damage buff. Always fun. And then you crack out of there, and you've got to throw the bombs at the oncoming enemies. Again, it was a little slow, but they then gave you a gong, so you could speed it up. The Blizzard were aware of these things. Smashing through the walls, uh, dealing with the um, the onslaught that would come towards the adds with the massive bombs, doing huge amounts of damage and debuffing the boss as well, so you could blast him. I think the weakest part of this dungeon was just the end, the back and forth against the wind, but it wasn't too bad if you were aware of it. Like the first one was always the worst there, but after that it got really, really good. So Siege is out temple up there. I'm gonna follow that up with the Vortex Pinnacle. A lot of my memory of this isn't is based on one the environment, very very cool. The environment is awesome. Uh, getting into these windy areas in Kata, we hadn't really seen anything like that before, so the uh, Vortex Pinnacle was really the top tier of that. And every boss after the first one. The first one, I think, is the weakest part of the Vortex Pinnacle, which I can take or leave any day of the week. Yet, everything else, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I, I love the dragon where you had to face the right way to get yourself a huge damage buff. So there was... The boss is doable without doing it, but if you're aware of it, you get so much more out of that boss and makes it into a really, really fun experience. Uh, and finally, up to the end where you jump down and deal with the giant electrical floor, which prepares you for the raiding as well, which is what the job of all the dungeons should be in some form or another. So, big memories there. Uh, next up, I have the stone core. Break yourself upon my body. Yes, the Stone Core. What a great setting the Stone Core was. Um, the, the actual going into uh, the Earth that we did through the Maelstrom was tremendous in it of itself, but the Stone Core just made it that much better. Um, obviously, we've got Osruk, but I loved the actual sacrifice boss towards the end. Uh, it's not a long dungeon by any means, but I think it does exactly what it needs to do without having to be overly grandiose for the sake of being overly grandiose which some of these dungeons do they're like oh look how big and giant it is and there's so many players out there it's like well the dungeon's only 10 minutes so it must be shit no uh the stone core just kept you interested and got you in and out exactly as a lot of cataclysm dungeons did it was the same complaint we kind of have about some of you know the, the, the slag mines and things like that is they're not particularly long uh kata went for a shorter dungeon version uh yet it was filled Right, I would rather have a small cup of really tasty juice than a giant mug of flavorless crap. Uh, and the Stone Core, I think, really nailed that down. Uh, similar with Grim Batal. Grim Batal is not a long dungeon, but what a creative process. Uh, everyone remembers the bombing run pretty fondly. I think some people got tired of it towards the end of the dungeon. And a mechanic like a bombing run only being boring towards the end of an expansion, I think, is a really good sign of how well they did that. As it did literally clear a lot of the trash for you. So the better you did, you were actually engaged with doing it it wasn't like a bombing run you would do for a quest where you just tag up numbers and you're like mindlessly watching something else this actually affected how you would play and you'd have good ones and bad ones and sometimes you're like whoa we nailed that and sometimes it's like why is everything on one percent uh who didn't bomb this <laughs> right uh the bosses were cool the giant ogre trying to smash you down and all the different mechanics you had there we of course had the first uh valiona and Theralian fight in there and of course the last boss filling that the the, the room with the black void uh in order to deal with the soul storm i believe it was called absolutely awesome uh next up would be one of the one of my finest dungeons i think from the burning crusade it's not quite the best one uh, and that would be the botanica uh the botanica was such a twist away from both the um both the other two uh tempest keep dungeons but in such a cool way the idea that the flowers were fighting with you and it and dealing with those elements inside that environment was such a contrast but done so well uh that it's 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 my favorite of the it's my one of my top dungeons there it's not my favorite of the three tempest keep ones obviously uh yet it is right right up there um the botanica is just i enjoyed it every single time and, and it, it gave me such a twist on every other burning crusade dungeon uh, that existed is to go into the botanica and be like out in sort of the void into the nether uh, go inside there and be like, oh, okay, it's all flowery and stuff. We have this mini gauntlet and they would sprout and they would work like flowers. Absolutely adored this one. Our next one is more of a story-themed one. We're really in the, the last sort of 20 dungeons here. Uh, but I, as much as I moaned about delays and things like that, this is one that I think did it in the perfect balance. It's the old Hills Bradfoot Hills. The, the journey of Thrall uh, and his escape as time is trying to change along the way. I think they nailed this. Not only was the actual dungeon cool, 
But we also had the extras that they threw in that were going around the time, going to talk about the Ashbringer down there and uh, collecting the hats that you could get out of there, the, the little uh, safari hats. Uh, but the actual fights themselves, always awesome. Always kept you moving, which is something I appreciate so much in these more story-driven dungeons, is they keep you moving. Uh, and if they don't keep you moving, that's when you get tedious, like we saw with Halls of Stone and things like that. And the Old, Hill, old Hills by Foothills, I was kind of gutted we only had to really do it once. Uh, and didn't get to go back enough, because I enjoyed this every single time. And perhaps it's a case if I would have done it a lot, I would like it less. But for, me, for my memories and looking back over it, pretty awesome. The next two up are the remaining Alcani dungeons, uh, which would be, besides the Shadow Labs, uh, would be Mana Tombs and Al Ashani Crypts. Alcani Crypts. Um, these were again boss uh, dungeons, and I have a big favor, a flavor of love for dungeons that throw in extras that are optional. Uh, so uh, the crypts is given this other contrast that do you expect for Alcan Down is this dark, dingy, necrotic, uh, necromancy sort of place, while the mana tombs focus more on the energy side of it. It's very similar, very very similar to the Tempest Keep dungeons in having this one area, but has really contrasting styles. So unfortunately, Sethic Halls didn't really fall into that. <laughs> Not the theme that I particularly enjoyed. Uh, but Mana Tombs, uh, moving through there, felt kind of mysterious and paranormal, whereas over on the Ashani Crypt side, uh, it felt much more like the, the actual crypts, as, as it should have been, with ghostly things going on like that. And I think they nailed every single element of that, including the bosses, even the boss with the reflects at the beginning of Mana Tombs. I think they nailed that absolutely perfectly. Uh, next up would be one of my absolute favorite classic dungeons, which stood apart from the rest by the point I hit this. As I said, I've been Horde for a really long time up until Wrath of the Lich King. I was Alliance a little bit at the start of classic, but I didn't do many dungeons because I had no friends. Um, and I did not like pugging. But this dungeon really opened my eyes to what dungeons could be. And that would be Zulfarak. Zulfarak was eye-opening eye-opening to me as to what they could do when they really got creative because before that i'd had like rage fire chasm i'd had noma um but zulfarak was like okay we have a thing now we have the gauntlet event we've got a giant hydra coming out of the water uh we have all those things going on and this place is cool man uh it was really sad actually one of the things and the same reason i'm not going to be playing the burning crusade classic is going back to classic wow and do zulfarak it was insanely easy uh, and I remember going to the stairs so full of hope and excitement, waiting for all those mobs to spawn so we could do the gauntlet. And people were like, yeah, we just don't do that anymore. Just just pull them down here. We're going to kill everything. And I was so very sad. Uh, so I'm looking at it from the perspective of the opposite way. Similarly, in Classic then, I'm, I'm putting all these in a hole. And I want to be clear, this is not the remakes. This is the originals. And it's the original Scarlet Monastery as a whole package. I know you have to do them separately. Um, and they're not connected like Diamore was, but they were a kind of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back process uh, while you were there. Ideally, you do all the Scarlet Dungeons together, and, but uh, absolutely not the remakes. The remakes are just similar to what I said about Zulgarub and Zulaman. They're just watered-down versions of the originals, and the originals are just better. The library is just really good, with Doan at the end is awesome, and of course, Cathedral and opening those grandiose doors for the first time has been done better since, but to, to put it back in the context of the classic times, uh, God, this dungeon was just everything I wanted from a World of Warcraft dungeon. Uh, absolutely so cool. <laughs> so, so cool. The whole thing, I, I there was many times I went back at uh, level 50, level 60, helping friends in Scarlet Monastery just because I enjoyed being there. Uh, I would run them through that quest every single time uh, so I could help them out. Uh, moving on, Arnket, the Old Kingdom. This is one of those dungeons, it's a real shame that, like, one of the best bosses, uh, two of the best bosses in here are skipped. Son of a bitch, because Arnket is really cool. Now, the bosses you do actually end up doing, uh, the porting, moving boss at the beginning, dealing with all his cool trash along the way, uh, we have the, the other boss that has you refocus enemies, he's the first boss, then the second boss is very cool, then we have the whole mushroom area that no one ever goes to, which is really cool, and gives such a great contrast within this dungeon, and then we have another awesome boss with a gauntlet going on at the top, but nobody ever does that boss either, they just go straight to the last boss, thankfully the straight, the, the final boss is cool, where you have to fight the reflections of yourself, not the first time it's been done, but done very very well, there's very little to dislike about Arnket. It has very little trash. Uh, if you pull correctly, and most people dive over the wall, but even if you don't do that, it doesn't have a lot of trash. It just has boss after boss after boss after boss uh, with a little bit of trash in between. And the trash you do do is kind of fun and interesting. Nailed it. Now, for the most controversial choice on this list, and I will fucking stand by this, the Oculus. The Oculus is a good dungeon. 
It's just that a lot of people in this game are fucking really bad. <laughs> and the Oculus is fine. It's actually fine. And it's really fun. If you know what you're doing, and I get that it's not obvious. It is not obvious what you're supposed to do in the Oculus, uh, if you don't know it. But it's also not hard to figure it out either. Um, you just It takes a little bit more than follow the, po follow the road. Uh, the Oculus is a fine dungeon, and it pissed me off no end uh, that a lot of people just wouldn't do it. Because there's not very little to dislike here. You have some vehicle combat that's done well. You only have one or two spells that all make obvious sense how they work. Uh, you have a very clear path you're supposed to, f to go on. We've got a very cool boss in uh, the first boss. You, you have to get down and zerg him down. Then we have another boss on a big platform, which is cool. Then we have another boss in the central area who you have to use line of sight and things with because he's in the middle. Uh, dealing with a final sort of vehicle combat Malagos style boss. Now, it may have been that because I learnt Malagos that I was more okay with the Oculus. But the hatred this dungeon gets, I think, is... I personally, without being offensive, it's a reflection of how fucking terrible uh, pugs were because you'd have one or two players who didn't have a goddamn clue what was happening in there and therefore the whole dungeon kept falling apart. That's what I saw. You'd have like one or two players who knew what they were doing and were totally fine with it and then you'd have three players who were like, I don't, I don't get it and they would just give up or just leave and then everybody's experience was terrible um, because this dungeon was, was good. It was, Oculus was a fine dungeon. I had no problems with it at all and enjoyed it. And for the most part, towards the end, I could solo it. Uh, which meant, well, I, I, many times, many times, I would be soloing the Oculus as I would see a rotating stream of players join the group and leave the group back to back. Uh, and then they gave it extra rewards. You actually got way better stuff if you did the Oculus because so few people would do it. Uh, and I'm with Blizzard. This dungeon was fine. And they'll nev we'll never get a dungeon like this again because people are like, I can't do it. I don't know where I'm going. It's like, go up. You're on a flying dragon. Up. Yeah. Z-axis. Upwards. Let's go. <laughs> Let's move. I, don't, I can't find anybody. We're on the map. Look at the map. Yeah, I'm there, but I can't see it. Up, up, up. Oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, it, it didn't take long to learn. Anyway, I'm going to go on a rant there, but fuck everybody you ruined the Oculus. Uh, next up. Right. Okay. Context for this one. We are getting controversial because I really enjoy these dungeons, but... I understand the hatred. Uh, the same with the Oculus. I get it. I totally get it, all right? Uh, this next one, More of Souls. More of Souls is a great dungeon. And if you hate it because you farmed it 8 billion times, fine. I didn't do that. I didn't need to do that. In fact, nobody needed to do that. And the More of Souls is a really fucking cool dungeon. It's so atmospheric. It's so wonderful. And I enjoy this dungeon every single time. Um, I did not farm the shit out of it, though, and, and poison my mind to the Mora Souls. Um, I loved the opening. I loved getting on the boat of the Damned. I loved dealing with the lower ship, moving onto it, and the final boss fight of the Kraken, uh, dealing with all that stuff, and it's nice and quick. Similar to what I've said about some other dungeons like Stonecore, is doesn't need to be long, and Blizzard got punished for that, and that really hurts me. <laughs> it really hurts me, is they got punished for making a quick, efficient, densely packed dungeon, like every inch of Mar of Souls is cool and interesting, uh, but we never got it. Uh, my next favorite here is the city of Tolvia. I love the city of Tolvia. Again, feels like we're raiding a city, uh, and we were. We were invading a city. The bosses are really cool, from alligator snapping and uh, imagery up until, all the way up until the last boss, where we got to do some cool debuffs that gave you extra damage dealt if you managed it correctly, but it was fine if you didn't. It was just a longer dungeon. Uh, but the theme of it, moving through the streets, moving through the marketplaces and things like that, I really enjoy the city of Sol Solvia. I felt very connected with that dungeon, um, which is why it's up here on this list. Next up is one of these bosses that it's a crime how much people just bypass this dungeon because it is full of such creativity and it never gets seen. The Halls of Origination. And this is kind of where I think Blizzard were like, there's no point in us putting too many optional things into dungeons because people just fucking skip it as soon as possible. Uh, I really wish they would just do a simple thing like modify the end reward for more bosses killed. Like you get a multiplier on your end reward uh, for more bosses killed, but be it XP or an extra chance at loot or something like that. The Halls of Iteration has loads of bosses in it. It's like eight or something stupid. I think people do like three. <laughs> they do like three. And it's such a shame because it's really cool. Uh, you've got Bone Storming in there. You've got Sun Bosses in there. All kinds of stuff goes on in the Halls of Iteration. And I remember when we were gearing up in Cataclysm is... I loved it when we got to go to Halls because there were so many chances of loot, so many quality upgrades, and all the bosses are really interesting. Uh, and it very quickly devolved into just kill the last boss and get out, lols. 
crime. Uh, next up will be the Magister's Terrace. Yeah, you're expecting it somewhere. The actual... They call it the PvP boss, but it wasn't. But either way, the, the PvP boss makes or breaks this dungeon. Because Lord knows the final Kel'thas fight is okay. It's okay. It's not great. But the Mana Worm boss... And all the trash leading up to that, it's so pretty, it's so full of life, and that PvP boss was so interesting. It was really cool. The giggles you can have with bosses that kind of respond in an unexpected way is really fun. And I think they nailed it down here. And Magister's Terrace is a dungeon that I very much enjoyed and loved farming for all the trinkets for my guild. Uh, I tanked this thing probably a hundred times in the first week it was out or something stupid. And next up, we're going all the way back to Classic. We're in the final 10 now. Top 10 list, guys. Alderman! Alderman. I don't get why people dislike Alderman. It's awesome. As an archaeological dig, I, I, feel, I feel like this list is painting me out as some sort of Indiana Jones fan. I'm not particularly, but uh, the, the, it's the theme I'm talking about. As an archaeological dig, they nailed it. Uncovering these old services, several optional bosses, lots of pits that have revealed things, opening the maiden door for the first time, constructing the staff, having this inbuilt system in the dungeon that was a little bit of a side quest of curiosity, especially when you didn't know what happened. Putting that in, having the whole city light up and open a big door to the giant maiden coming out. Uh, leading to that final boss with Arcadus and all that kind of stuff. There's so much to like in Alderman that I, I enjoy it to this day. Optional bosses, again, um, that were really cool. Big fan. Uh, another one that I know people are like, really? And I think this might come from a lot of people who play Private Realms and done this dungeon to the absolute death. Or just smashed through it in Classic. But this is one of my all-time favorites is the Temple of Atal Hakkar. Um... I love this dungeon. I loved walking out onto the platforms when you didn't know the order and having everybody clicking the mirrors to line everything up. Uh, spawning the extra Hakkar bosses if you'd done the stuff uh, where you could actually get the egg. Dealing, coming, turning the corridor and seeing those dragons waiting for you and you're like, whoa! Like, there's so much good theatre and drama in the, the Temple of Atal Hakkar that it makes me very, very sad that some people go, oh, it's so long because they just want the experience. That's kind of the shame of efficient playing, uh, which is prevalent in, in MMOs, and it can't be taken away. But efficient playing can take away from the theatre and drama of it. Because it's not forced on you. Because the theatre and drama of, say, the Trial of the Crusader, or the Trial of the Champion dungeon, is just forced on you. you just got to kind of sit and watch. Where the theatre of something like Sunken Temple, as most people know it as, is that it's a surprise. You go one way, and there's dragons. You go another way, and you're lighting up mirrors. And you're all doing something. It's not being forced on you in any way. Uh, you're not just like watching the game do it for you, right? Like, like a cutscene. Uh, this time you're, you're fighting one boss, you come around the corner, and there's a couple of dragons flying around, and you can spawn extra dragons, or you can make some event happen, similar to what we saw in Alderman, is you make these events happen, and they're really cool. Uh, next up is the Shadow Labyrinth. The Shadow Labs. The Shadow Labs I have such fond memories of, and it's I, I'm not going to lie, this is entirely down to the Time for Fun boss absolutely hilarious time for fun boss is always fun the, now don't get me wrong the rest of the place is also stellar it is a class a dungeon from start to finish uh really manageable no stupid ninja pulls if you played smart everything is predictable and you can manage it effectively meaning a good group can get through here just fine uh which is what i want in a dungeon is it's difficult but it's manageable and repeatable um and nothing that's really going to screw you over and the shadow labs i would if, if my guild was asking is anybody doing a shadow labs run i'd be like yeah i'll tank it Every time. Every single time without question. Next up will be the Nexus. I don't think I've been in a, a dungeon that was as visual as visually amazing uh as the Nexus. And the bosses there, it's a shame they're so easy. <laughs> it is a shame they're so easy. I was trying to get the name of one of the bosses there to think of. The the giant portal boss um that exists in there. And including the reflect boss and then the final boss with the jumping in it. It's very silly, but the Nexus for me, I think, is so perfectly done in its theme. It's it's hard to feel it's hard to feel sad or bored inside the Nexus. Whether you're dealing with a simple boss breaking them out of the ice cubes or them being th are you being thrown around endlessly by the second boss. I know it's one of those ones that I was struggling. I was like, is it really that high in my memory? Because obviously some of the dungeons were technically better. Uh, maybe thematically better, mechanically better. But overall, I mean, I think about the Nexus and I'm like, I, I loved the Nexus. I absolutely loved going in there and dealing with it and seeing how far we could push ourselves in there. Next one is going to be a little bit of a downer because I think people are going to remember it for high M plus and probably for the Witch Trio. 
Uh, yet I look at it from the middle of the road level and I don't know a dungeon that fit its theme better than Waycrest Manor. Waycrest Manor, and I do have a fondness for the macabre, unquestionably. That's very apparent in a lot of my content. But Waycrest Manor, mm, so good. So, so good. For a creepy witch, is like, Drusfire itself is tremendous. But Waycrest Manor, I think, was the perfect ending to that. We've got the witch trio. Uh, we've got the uh, ghosts leaving traps on the floor, spawning phantasms down into the basement where this underground crypt is, where they're summoning things. There are mechanical problems in there, and it's all going to come down to plus tricks, like trying to glitch mobs and snap them into certain places and things like that. But that's not what I'm focused on here. I'm talking about the dungeon in and of itself, and I've done that throughout the entire list. And Waycrest Manor is so good. <laughs> so, so good. Next up is going to be our final... I No, it's not our final classic dungeon, actually. Shadow Fang Keep. Yeah, Shadow Fang Keep. Leveling dungeon in classic. Yeah, I rate it so, so highly as both thematically and creatively awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I th I believe Shadow Fang Keep is what Blackrock Hold really wished it could be. Uh, Shadow Fang Keep is not hard. Uh, it's. But think about what you do. You have a prison break. Breaking into a big main courtyard where you've got bosses that are turning into werewolves. Uh, moving through that, you've got some separate extra areas you can move to. Um, you deal with this cool boss at the end, teleporting around the dungeon, making things hard for you. Uh, you've got being locked in with giant wolves, which they then brought back later. You know, like it's got all these elements in it, and it was done originally. Like Shadow Fang Keep, I farmed that. Dun I think I probably got six levels in Shadow Fang Keep, uh, just farming it over and over again because I had such a blast every single time i went in there um i can't i can't say enough about this dungeon of how much i enjoy everything from the immersion to the interesting everything is interesting in there everything it really makes me sad that it's now utilized in like the um uh some of the you know the seasonal events where you go in and you kind of just muller three bosses to death and you have to be unquestionably you have to be at the right level with the right kind of group uh, in order to enjoy Shadow Fang Keep. The music was the... Dun -dun 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 -dun, and that was the first time I'd heard that music. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is cool, man. Um, yeah, no, no regrets in saying that. Uh, next up will be the Architraz. The Architraz Tempest Keep. I believe this is our final Burning Crusade dungeon. Um, the Architraz... Oh, my God. To have Millhouse come out of that thing and be like, I'm going to light you up, sweet cheeks, and then deal with the, all the bosses in there. That was so cool, man. And it felt like a prison. If, you know, you've made mistakes breaking out certain enemies. Not to mention just how difficult this boss was and how few group uh, dungeon was and how few groups were able to even contemplate doing this place on Heroic to get started in the Burning Crusade. But getting through the Architraz... You, it meant something, man. It meant something. It's gorgeous, like Mechanar, like Botanica. It's absolutely gorgeous. But the finale, this again, I'm a, I'm a sucker for theatre, man. I'm a sucker for theatre. And this has all the theatre in the world. Uh, and I absolutely adored it. Next up will be Blackrock Depths. You knew it was coming at some point, but I mean, there's barely anybody who's done Blackrock Depths who doesn't adore this, unless you've been farming Hand of Justice for eight fucking hundred runs. I did. I did think I did thirty five runs for mine when uh, Classic came out. But uh, yeah, what a what an experience Blackrock Depths is, especially if you do the whole thing in a run. You really appreciate just what they created there was likely something we'll never see again because it's far too much for a lot of people and even now when they create what they call mega dungeons they're still way smaller than block rock depths uh which is a whole a whole thing unto itself full of mini events and this is why i, I get bothered and i get called this sort of uh i get called a bit of a shithead sometimes for pointing out that like a lot of the stuff that's being put into modern wow is a regression on what we had years and years ago and that's not right that's not the way it's supposed to be um and this is where I looked at, like, do you, did you know, like, Blackrock Depths had things like the Grim Guzzler event. It had lockboxes and keys and vaults to open. It had multiple paths. It had attunement to the core in there. It had summoning of ghosts. It had giant emperor theaters that dropped little epic items like Iron Foe. This was all the way back then. And then I see something like a brand new uh, zone come out. Like we're, do we're covering Corthia at the moment in 9.1. It has like four dailies. And the feedback I get is you expect too much. And I just look at people and go, motherfucker. We had shit like Blackrock Depths when this game fucking came out, man. 
Like, 15 years ago, it was 10 times the amount of shit that we have in a lot of the modern stuff. Don't say I'm being rose-tinted or not, because it's all there, and it, could, it should be done better. No one's saying Blackrock Depths is, like, mechanically the pinnacle of WoW, and like, oh, well, clearly, like, none of the bosses in modern World of Warcraft dungeons could even pass the clear mechanical prowess of the Emperor or anything. No one's saying that. Of course the games come forward mechanically, but in terms of creativity, in terms of immersion, and in terms of just fun things to do within a dungeon, look at the original RPG fantasy side of things and tell me that your Aldermans were crafting staffs to summon extra bosses, Eggs of Hakar that you're getting from side quests, elite quests where you can get extra stuff, and Blackrock Depths with its sheer just quantity of variation and things to do doesn't shit all over that and that's when it's that's when it comes to light i think it's a good reflection on things and the same will be said for the next dungeon which is shallowmance shallowmance Ex i mean shallowmance what a fucking place that is what a place that is that isn't rose tinted either it fits everything you would expect from what shallowmance should be or scholomance as many people say because it's scholar mike i got shouted at during classic for calling it shallowmance i've called it shallow since i was since i was fucking playing world of warcraft scholomance uh scholomance again full of extras full of useful stuff to do full of side paths to go on really creative areas bosses that is, i'm talking about the original version not the remake here uh so much variety of things to happen in there that it's just everything about it is incredible uh we have the last two remaining here and i'm really torn I'm really quite torn of which I would consider the number one. So I'm just going to say these are joint number ones. As much as that's a cop-out, you, you can hear what I have to say. Um, the Dead Mines. This is... It's very close, but he's, it's probably my favorite dungeon ever in World of Warcraft. As you've no doubt noticed with my top ten list, I'm a sucker for theatre. I'm a sucker for drama in a dungeon. I want, the, I want the dungeon to tell a story. I want the dungeon to mean something more than what quests I get complete or what loot it drops. I want this dungeon to matter and god damn it does the dead mines work. I don't even mind the ridiculous run to get into the dungeon. Uh, but the, the sheer fun you have in this dungeon, uh, especially at the time, is unreal to me. Um, one of my first, and I'm, I'm probably really biased because it was one of my first proper dungeon experiences in World of Warcraft, but god did I run this place over and over again because I loved it. The shooting the cannons through the doors, moving through the furnace area, dealing with all those elements of the dungeon, and then the finale when it opens up to that giant pirate ship that has optional bosses on it again. Uh, talk about the original one, not the, the redone version was okay, but the original is the pinnacle in my eyes. Uh, and they try. I think they just tried to recapture that memory that a lot of them, those guys had. Uh, but the Dead Mines for me it told a story from start to finish. I didn't know about the Van Cleefs. I never read any of the quests moving towards it. I was over the World of Warcraft lore in my beginnings of WoW. It's not something that faded away from me. I wasn't interested from the start. Uh, yeah, the Van Cleef story was absolutely something I was interested in. And then when I learned that story and paired it up with the dungeon, I was like, wow, this is so good. Uh, so, so good. Uh, which was my favorite dungeon. Now, this is going to be awkward for some of you because you're going to be like, well, isn't it just... It, this is the only one of these that is a remake that was not watered down and is, in fact, vastly improved. And that is the return to Karazhan. Karazhan is what, number one raid of all time. And the dungeon is right up there as well. I haven't put the Mechagon dungeons on here. Um, I'm only just realizing that now, actually. But I would put them about maybe seven or eight places back. The Mechagon dungeons were actually really good. Um, not as good as they could have been. Similar to what I said about Motherload and other themes there. The, the city is great. And the final boss is great in the Mechagon Dungeons. But um, eh, it, 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 I think it should have been better for the theme that went in there. Um, but Return to Karazhan. Wow. I, I can't even remember the last time I experienced something as creatively fun in World of Warcraft as the Return to Karazhan Dungeon. Some things have come close. But the Karazhan dungeons uh, were just a journey to go on and reminded me not only of the raid, but done in a different way. I, I consider these very separate because Return to Karazhan is very, very different than the raid version, um, which is I'm thankful for. They didn't try and do like they did with Zulgrub and Zulman, which was take the raid version and just kind of shrink it down to five man. They just went all out here, uh, starting in the pits all the way up into space fighting aliens <laughs> and everything in between along the way. I'm so thankful this wasn't just a remade Karazhan. I'm so thankful it wasn't just Chess Event vo version 2, Nether Spike version 2 or anything like that. They didn't do that. Instead, they went a totally different direction and went, what could be in Karazhan? And the answer is literally anything. And that tells a story. Similar to the Dead Man's, similar to Scholo, 
uh, it tells a story. And you, when you're in Karazhan, you're just having fun. And that's all I can think of is I'm just having fun. So there you go, guys. That is my list of all the dungeons in World of Warcraft. What a hefty list it is. Thank you for sitting through it with me. Um, poof. Yeah. I know it seems weird. It's like, oh, you've got like four classic dungeons in the top uh, top tier. But I honestly, I don't think... I'm not being... A, I don't think I'm being a douche there, honestly. Like, there are others that are maybe thematically better. There are others that are mechanically better. But when I look at the whole package, when I think of Deadmines, when I think of Scholar, when I think of Blackrock Depths, when I think of Shadowfang Keep... I think they're very different than uh, a lot of the other dungeons. They're very different. Like, Freehold is immensely good on theme. And it has a little bit of that with, like, sorting the pirates out. But it's done in a way that's to be efficient. And that's that's kind of where this goes wrong. Because there's nothing efficient about the Deadmines. There's nothing efficient about Scholo. There's nothing efficient about Blackrock Depths. It's telling a story in and of itself. And that's what I truly enjoy. And I think that's where some of the others miss out where blizzard kind of feels like they want to put some of that stuff in but they're also worried that players are going to moan but i think players moan and i think we've shown that throughout this list moan when they're forced to just stand and wait for shit to happen like we did in trial of the champion that's not the same as say sunken temple where the players are actively taking part uh in the progression of the dungeon i think that's a very different theme but here's no uh i'm sure i'm gonna get shouted out by you guys but either way thank you very much for listening bye bye